there, welcome to another lesson of Mathematics Form 1. How are you all doing today? Hope you are feeling good. My name is Susan Matthews and I am from SMK Putrajaya Prisin 181. In this lesson, we are going to explore factors and multiples. I hope you are ready for the lesson. You may want to prepare a notebook, pen and calculator to make it easier for you to take down notes and to do calculations during our lesson today. Let's begin. Firstly, let's look at the learning objectives for today's lesson. By the end of today's lesson, you should be able to Number 1. Determine factors, prime factors and highest common factor, HCF and Number 2. Determine multiples, common multiples and lowest common multiple, LCM. Are you ready for the lesson? Yes, of course you are. Do you know what the factors of a number are? How do we find out if a number is a factor of another? Is 4 a factor of 24? To know if 4 is a factor of 24, we simply divide 24 by 4 and find out if the remainder is 0 or not. Take a look at the question. Is the remainder 0 here? If we divide 24 by 4, we get the quotient as 6 and the remainder as 0. So, what does this mean? After the division, if the remainder is equal to 0, it tells us that the divisor is a factor of the dividend. Since the remainder is 0 here, we say that 4 is a factor of 24. It also means that 24 is divisible by 4. But is 4 the only factor of 24? What are other numbers that can be divided by 24? In maths, factors of a number are whole numbers that can be divided by the number completely. To find the factors, we can use the multiplication as well as the division method. We can also apply the divisibility rules. Factoring is a useful skill to find factors, which is further used in real-life situations, such as dividing something into equal parts or dividing in rows and columns, comparing prices, exchanging money and understanding time. Let's look at this example. 3 multiplied by 5 is equal to 15. In this example, we can say that 3 and 5 are the factors of 15. Understanding factorizing allows you to easily navigate number relationships in the real world. Let's look at these examples. How many ways can you complete these calculations using whole numbers? Let's look at the first example. How can we get 12 by multiplying two whole numbers? Yes, we can multiply 1 with 12. We can multiply 2 with 6. And lastly, we can multiply 3 with 4. All these multiplications give us the same value which is 12. Let's look at example 2. How can we get 20 by multiplying two whole numbers? Yes, we can multiply 1 with 20. We can multiply 2 with 10. And lastly, we can multiply 4 with 5. All these multiplications give us the same value, which is 20. Let's try the same method for the third example. How can we get 30 by multiplying two whole numbers? Yes, we can multiply 1 with 30. We can multiply 2 with 15, we can multiply 3 with 10. 
And lastly, we can multiply 5 with 6. Boys and girls, I believe you see a pattern in those examples. Yes, true. When listing factors, we will start with 1 and end with the number itself. Then, multiply and try with multiples of 2, 3, 4 and so on. Here, we will also test for divisibility to find out if a number is a factor of another number. Let's look at a few examples. Let's now take a look at another way of listing the factors of a number. You will often be given a number and told to list all its factors. Well, can you think of two numbers that the product is 24? Take a look. The first thing you do is find the simplest way of multiplying to 24. And you start with 1. So, 1 and the number itself are always the first factors you list. Write the factors down in pairs. One in the father's right and another in the father's left. We will fill in the space in between with the other factors as we go along. For each pair of factors, use an arc to show which factors multiply together. It helps to keep your thinking clear so that you do not forget to write down a factor. Now you can try this with me. 2 multiply with 12 is equal to 24. So list the 2 and 12 and put the arc in. Now try with 3. 3 multiply with 8 is 24. So list the number 3 and 8 and put the arc in. Next, let us try with 4. So list the number 4 and 6 and put the arc in. Let us see if we can try with 5. 24 is not divisible by 5. So the next number would be 6. And 6 is already in the list. That is also an indication that we have finished looking for factors of 24. So now, we have found all the factors for 24. Then, we can conclude that the factors of 24 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12 and 24. Let's try to do another example. Let's find all the factors of 36. 1 multiply with 36, 2 multiply with 18, 3 multiply with 12, 4 multiply with 9. What about 5? 5 is not a factor of 36 as 36 is not divisible by 5. So we move on to the next number which is 6. 6 multiply with 6. Now we know that we have found all the factors for 36. So the factors of 36 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, 12, 18 and 36. Let us move on to the next section. What are prime factors? Do you still remember what prime number means? Can you identify which of the following numbers are prime numbers? We have 2, 9, 23, 41, 57 and 69. Yes, that's right. The prime numbers in the given list are 2, 23 and 41. Prime numbers are numbers that are divisible by one and itself only. So, what are prime factors? Prime factors mean the factors that are prime numbers. As an example, factors of 18 are 1, 2, 3, 6, 9 and 18. Among these factors, 2 and 3 are prime numbers. Thus, 2 and 3 are known as prime factors of 80. Let's now learn about prime factorization. 
A number can be expressed in the form of prime factorization in which the number is written as the product of its prime factors. For instance, 18 is equal to 2 multiply 3 multiply 3. Prime factorization of a number can be done by using two methods which are repeated division by prime numbers and by using a factor tree. Let's look at the first method, which is repeated division. Let's look at this example. Express 60 in the form of prime factorization. Start by dividing the number by the first prime number 2 and continue dividing by 2 until you get a decimal or remainder. Then start dividing by 3, 5, 7, etc until you get 1 as the quotient. Let's start. 60 can be divided by 2. The answer would be 30. Then we continue dividing 30 by 2 again as it is still divisible by 2. We will get 50. For the next division, we need to find another factor to divide 50. Remember to use only prime numbers when you do the division. Yes, we can use 3 as the next divisor. Now, the answer is equal to 5. What is the prime number which can be divided by 5? Yes, 5 is the next prime number. Now, the question is 1. That means we have completed the division. The prime factorization of a number is that a number written solely as a product of prime numbers. Now, we can conclude that prime factorization for 60 is 2 multiply with 2, multiply with 3 and multiply with 5. Let's look at the second method, which is the factor 3. In the factor 3 method, we will write pairs of factors for the given number which make branches of a factor tree. For example, let's find the prime factorization of 56. We can start with any factor pair such as 2 and 28. We write 2 and 28 below 56 with branches connecting them. The factor 2 is a prime so we can circle it. The factor 28 can still be divided further, so we need to find its factors. Let's use 2 and 14. We write these factors on the tree under the 28. Again, as the factor 2 is prime, so we circle it. The factor 14 can still be divided. Let's use 2 and 7. We write these factors under 14. Since 2 and 7 are prime numbers, we can circle both the numbers. The prime factorization is the product of the circled primes. We generally write the prime factorization in order from the least to the greatest. The prime factorization of 56 is the product of 2, 2, 2 and 7. Remember that a number is written as the product of two factors continuously until all the factors at the bottom level are prime factors. Now, let's look at what common factors are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 and 12 are factors of 12. 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 10, 15 and 30 are factors of 30. From the list of factors, we can see that there are some common factors for both 12 and 30 which are 1, 2, 3 and 6. It means that both 12 and 30 can be divided by 1, 2, 3 and 6 completely. Therefore, 1, 2, 3 and 6 are known as common factors of 12 and 30. Next, let's look at what is highest common factor. The highest common factor of a number can be calculated using three methods 
which are listing the common factors, repeated division, or by using prime factorization. Let's explore the first method to find the highest common factor or what is known as HCF. This method for finding the HCF is quicker when you are dealing with smaller numbers. To find the HCF of a set of numbers, list all the factors of each number, then find the common factors. The greatest number appearing on common factors is the highest common factor or HCF. In the previous example, we learned how to list common factors. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 and 12 are factors of 12. And 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 10, 15 and 30 are factors of 30. From the factors, we identified the common factors for both 12 and 30, which are 1, 2, 3 and 6. From this list, which is the highest common factor? Yes, correct. 6 is the highest common factor for 12 and 30. Isn't that easy, boys and girls? Now, let's explore the second method of finding the highest common factor, which is using repeated division. Here, we shall divide the given numbers by a common factor repeatedly. Then, determine the highest common factor by multiplying all the devices. For example, let's find the highest common factor for 12 and 30. Step 1. First, start dividing both numbers by their common factors until there is no more common factor. 12 and 30 are divisible by 2 which gives us 6 and 15. Then 6 and 15 can be divided by 3 which gives us 2 and 5. At this moment, there is no more common factor so we shall stop dividing and move to step 2. In step 2, we will find the product of the common factors that we used as divisor in this example. Thus, the highest common factor is 2 multiplied with 3 equals to 6. The third method to find highest common factor is by using prime factorization. In this method, we have to list the prime factors of each numbers. Circle every common prime factor. Multiply all the circled numbers. The result is the highest common factor. For example, suppose you want to find the highest common factor of 12 and 30. Step 1 says to list the prime factors of each number. Step 2 says to circle every prime factor that is common to all three numbers. As you can see, the numbers 2 and 3 are common factors of both the numbers. Multiply these circled numbers together. 2 multiplied with 3 is 6. Thus, the highest common factor of 12 and 30 is 6. In conclusion, the highest common factor of a number can be calculated using three methods which are listing the common factors, repeated division or by using prime factorization. Now, let's look at what common multiples are. What are multiples? Well, a multiple is any number obtained by multiplying other numbers together. For example, we can get the multiples of 4 by multiplying them by 1, 2, 3, and so on. The same method is used to get the multiples of 6. Multiples of 4 are 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40, 44, 48 and so on. Multiples of 6 are 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, 54, 60, 
66 and so on. The multiples that are common to two or more numbers are called the multiples of those numbers. The common multiples of 4 and 6 are 12, 24, 36, 48 and so on. We can find the common multiples of two or more numbers by listing the multiples of each number and then finding their common multiples. Now, let's look at what are lowest common multiples or sometimes known as LCM. Lowest common multiples of a number can be calculated using three methods which are listing the common multiples, repeated division, or by using prime factorization. Let's look at the first method, which is listing the common multiples. Firstly, we have to list the multiples of each number until at least one of the multiples appears on all the lists. Then, we find the smallest number that is on all of the list. The smallest number is the lowest common multiples, LCM. In the previous example, we learned how to list the multiples of 4 and 6. From the list, we also found the common multiples which are 12, 24, 36, 48 and so on. From this common multiples list, we need to identify the smallest which is 12. So we can conclude now that the LCM of 4 and 6 is 12. Isn't that easy boys and girls? Now let's look at the second method which is repeated division. Let's take a look at this example. In order to find the LCM of 3, 6 and 9, we divide them by any factor of the numbers in the following manner. Divide the numbers repeatedly by a divisor that can completely divide at least one of the numbers. First, let's divide all the numbers by 3 which gives us 1, 2 and 3. Then, in the second row, we can divide the number by 2. Only 2 can be divided by 2. So, the number 3 can be brought down to the third row. In the third row, divide the number 3 by 3. Remember, numbers that cannot be divided completely by the selected divisor are brought down for the subsequent divisions. This division is continued until all the quotients become 1. Once all the quotients become 1, then we need to multiply the divisors from the left column as shown on the screen. Now, we can conclude that the lowest common multiple for 3, 6 and 9 is 18. Now, boys and girls, let's look at the third method, which is prime factorization. How do we find LCM by prime factorization? We need to find all the prime factors of each given number. List all the prime numbers found as many times as they occur most often for any one given number. And finally, multiply the list of prime factors together to find the LCM. Another way to find the least lowest common multiple of two numbers is to use their prime factors. We will use this method to find the LCM of 12 and 30. We start by finding the prime factorization of each number. Prime factorization for 12 is 2 multiplied with 2 multiplied with 3. Prime factorization for 30 is 2 multiply with 3, multiply with 5. Then we write each number as a product of primes, matching primes vertically when possible. Now, we bring down the primes in each column. By matching up the common primes, each common prime factor is used only once. The LCM is the product of these factors. So, the LCM of 12 and 30 is 60. 
lowest common multiples LCM and the highest common factors HCF play a big role in mathematics involving fractions and also in solving real-life problems. When adding fraction, it is necessary to find a common denominator. We use the LCM as the smallest denominator. To simplify fraction, we need to find the highest common factor. Let's review some important points. Factors of a number are whole numbers that can divide the number completely. Prime number and integer whose only factors are one and itself. Prime factors are factors of a number that are themselves prime numbers. Let's practice now. Are you ready? I hope you are ready to test yourself. Question 1. Find the factors of 35. Did you manage to get the answers? Well, let's look at the solution. Factors of 35 are all the numbers which are multiplied to get 35 as the product. Find the two numbers whose product gives 35. We know the product of 1 and 35 gives 35. Since 35 is an odd number, we cannot express it in terms of 2. Since it is a multiple of 5, we know that 5 multiplies 7 equals to 35. We cannot find other numbers such that the product is 35. Therefore, the numbers 1, 5, 7 and 35 are the factors of 35. Question 2. Determine whether each of the following numbers is a prime factor of 84. Is 2 a prime number? And is 2 a prime factor of 84? Yes, great job! 2 is the first prime number. However, to determine if it is a factor of 84, we need to divide 84 with 2. As we know, 84 is an even number, so it is divisible by 2. This proves that 2 is a prime factor of 84. Now let's look at the next number. Is 5 a prime factor of 84? We know that 5 is a prime number. However, we still need to prove if 84 is divisible by 5. 84 divided by 5 equals to 16.8. As the answer is decimal, it proves that 5 is not a prime factor of 84. So, how is it so far? I hope you are all able to do the questions successfully. Now, let's look at question 3. List all the factors of 72 and state the prime factors for 72. We can start by listing all the factors of 72 as shown on the screen. From the listed factors, we need to identify the prime numbers. Yes, that's great! 2 and 3 are prime numbers. Thus, the prime factors of 72 are 2 and 3. Now, let's continue to question 4. Determine the highest common factor HCF of 18 and 24. Let's check the solutions in the repeated division method. Step 1. First, start dividing both numbers by their common factors until there are no more common factors. 18 and 24 are divisible by 2 which gives us 9 and 12. 9 and 12 can be divided by 3 which gives us 3 and 4. At this moment, there are no more common factors so we shall stop dividing and move to the second step. In the second step, we will find the product of the common factors that we used as divisor in this example. Thus, the HCF of 18 and 24 is 6. Now, let's look at the last question. What is the lowest common multiple LCM of 4 and 10? For 
this example, let's see the solution using the first method which is listing common multiples. The multiples of 4 are 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24 and so on. The multiples of 10 are 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 and so on. From this list, we need to identify the lowest common multiple which is 20. So we can conclude now that the LCM of 4 and 10 is 20. We have almost come to the end of today's class. Let's check the learning objectives that we have achieved today. Now you should be able to number one, determine factors prime factors and highest common factor HCF. Number two, determine multiples, common multiples and lowest common multiple LCM. Well, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Try to do more exercises on your own. Remember, practice makes perfect. I love maths and hope you do too. Goodbye and have a pleasant day. See you again in another lesson. Bye!